What's up guys, Austin here doing another video talking about my Tacoma. Now I know I've already talked about my Tacoma before, but this one's gonna be a little more specific here. And what I mean by that is today we're gonna be talking about the 10 things I hate about my car. Or dislike, not much hate, but more dislike. So what this is, is just a list of 10 things that over the amount of time I've had it that have kind of bugged me or that I don't like. Now, not all of it is gonna be like technical stuff that I think Toyota messed up, but some of it might actually be stuff that's kind of my fault, or some of it's just a little ticky tack stuff that isn't a big deal, but it kind of bugs me. So let's get right to the list. All right guys, first thing on the list, and you can see it right there, it is all the hail damage. You can best see it on the hood, the roof, and even that terrible ding right there. So pretty much what happened was literally 10 days after I bought the truck, I got hit by a major hailstorm in Colorado and it put some really gnarly dents literally 10 days after I bought it. Now granted, I did get a ton of money from the insurance company for it. Did I use it to fix my truck? No. It bought the lift kit. Priorities, right? So I do want to get the hood replaced. Maybe even get the one with the hood scoop. That would be pretty cool. Um, but otherwise, I think I'm just kind of going to leave the other dents there. All right, guys. Next thing on the list has to do with the body as well. And that is this terrible faded pinstriping. Now, this pinstriping apparently is kind of a theme on some of these Tacomas that some dealerships did. Um... People on the Tacoma forums kind of make fun of it. I call it being part of the pinstripe club. I want to get these removed. I mean, you can kind of see they're kind of fading away on their own, but probably one of my next big projects is I'm probably going to get a pinstripe remover and try to get this stuff out without taking the paint. I already tried to do it once, and this was the result. And this was without the pinstripe remover. It started to peel the paint away, which immediately I stopped right there. All right, so next thing on the list still has to do with the body and it is these fenders. These are some ugly fenders. And, but not only are they ugly on the outside, they are pains in the butt. They have little clips that hold on to it. And this one's actually pretty good, but some of them are actually separating, so it kind of pulls away from the body. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm either thinking of getting new bedsides, maybe get some wider flares, see what we could do there. But that's another thing I hate. Next thing, sticking with the theme of the body, would have to be this roof. I mean, this roof, it seems to be made of a different material, like a harder metal or a thinner aluminum or something, because in the mildest rainstorms, this metal roof is the noisiest thing in the world. Kind of a little nitpicky thing, but it is pretty annoying. I mean, it's pretty loud. I mean, and especially when you're in a hailstorm, it is like you're getting hit with boulder-sized hail, even though they're little tiny little pebbles. Next on the list is this antenna, and dear God, look how long that is. This is the stock antenna. Um, it is so long, it gets in the way so many times, it hits everything when you're off-roading. Also, you have to remove it when you go to car washes, um, it's just a pain in the butt to deal with half the time. You, now, you can get upgrades. You could get a little short, stubby one, or you get kind of a medium-length one. That's probably what I'm going to go with. Uh, if you get too short and stubby, you lose some of the radio signal, but hopefully we can get an upgrade on the antenna here. But yet another thing on my little nitpicky list. All right, so next thing on my list is going to have to be this entire transfer case system. Uh, you got my transfer case right here transfer case actuator right there the biggest pain in the butt is this actuator now funny story um if you see that little hose right there it's a little vacuum hose for it, it kind of keeps uh you know like airtight and all that stuff um it actually came off one day i didn't realize it i checked i normally check everything before i go on a trip but if it falls off in the middle of driving i can't do anything about it so one time during one of our big off-roading camping trips, it came off. Uh, we went through a big water crossing, and it actually sucked in a ton of water into the actuator. If you, if you actually take the cap off, there's a bunch of wire leads and all this stuff in there. Um, it caused a shortage and corrosion. So the next time that I went into four-wheel, it did not want to go into four-wheel. 
And sometimes I could actually get it in the four wheel and it would just lock. So there was actually a good month I was stuck in four high and it would not get out. Um, needless to say, I got the tube fixed. I actually soldered all the connections again since they were all corroded. I cleaned it out, soldered them, put it back together. But man, that cost me tons of time and a good month and a half of off-roading I could have done. All right, so the next two things are actually going to have to do with this dirty engine bay. Ah, man, I got to clean this thing out soon. But the first thing is the spark plugs. It's a V6, so you got three spark plugs over here. These are the easiest to change. But the biggest pain in the butt is these ones over here, especially this one in the back. I mean, there's so much stuff here. You can barely even see it. But you can see the middle one there. Now, changing these, like I said, the other side was quick and easy. This side is just a big pain in the butt. Now, there's not this much hosing and stuff going on in a automatic transmission engine, I found out. But you still have this bar right here. And you have to remove that to access this one. And, I mean, it's just the biggest pain in the butt. So, if you have a Tacoma and you're going to change your spark plugs, be prepared for that. Uh, there's some videos that show you how to take it out, but it's all just a pain in the ass. Alright guys, we're getting down to the final stuff on the list. The next would be the gas mileage. And pretty much the engine in general. Um, it is a better engine than the newer model Tacomas. I'm not going to lie, especially since mine's the 4 liter and theirs is the 3.5. Um, I got more power. My transmission runs better. But the other ones have better gas mileage. And this thing, I'm probably getting 16 to 17. The other ones, I think, are getting like almost 20. Um, not a huge difference, but it's enough for your bank account. Both of these engines, though, are just absolute dogs going up a hill. I mean, there is a good hill in Colorado going up to the Eisenhower Tunnel. And it is very steep. Uh, it's very long. And this thing just struggles if you let off the gas. I mean, if somebody gets in front of me on that hill, I know it's going to be just a big struggle. I'm going to have to drop gear and just high rev it the whole way up. But all in all, my biggest gripe about the motor is the gas mileage. Humongous gas guzzler. This is a thirsty girl. And the last thing is something I thought I would never say. But the last thing I hate about my Tacoma is the manual transmission. Driving a stick makes everything more fun, uh, but when you're off-roading, it can be kind of a pain of the butt. Now, it's not a huge pain. You don't have to like shift a whole lot when you're off-roading, but when you have to start up hills, if you're not very good at starting up hills with a normal car on pavement, it is a bigger pain in the butt with this thing on a rock. So, it's kind of a little gripe thing. I don't hate it as much, but it does get kind of annoying, especially in traffic or on off-roading. So, Also a quick little note with it, Toyota has always been known for their engineering and durability, but I will say that the clutch system itself on this transmission is horrible. That master cylinder back there, I've already had to replace three of them. It's not the greatest system that they've ever thought of. All right, and the very last thing is all these scratches in the bed. I mean, I bought it like this, and I know I didn't do this because I rarely haul stuff in here. Luckily, this is super fixable. We're probably gonna turn this into a project as well. Or maybe resurface this whole thing. All right, guys, so that's the video there. Like I said, a little ticky-tack list I just want to put together for you guys. It was actually pretty hard to think of 10 things I don't like about my Tacoma. That's why most of the stuff wasn't that big a deal. Um, I think there was like two or three things that immediately I was like, I know exactly what to put on here. And then I had to think about it for a bit. But in reality, all this stuff has a fix. So it's not like we're not going to deal with that at some point and get it taken care of. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the little video, short little stuff of me complaining, being a little whiner. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you liked it, want to see more, subscribe, that'd be great. I'll see you guys next time. Later.